Right. Well, I'm going to kick things off. Um, uh, and then as, as some of you are introducing yourselves, I'm going to try and set it up so I can actually see and things as well. Um, so good evening, good afternoon. And I think we may even have some good morning. If uh, Paul, are you over on the, the West Coast at the moment? I am indeed. Fantastic. Well, it's before lunchtime still. Um, so, uh, yes. So welcome to those who have um, have not been to one of our Stamtish meetings before. This is a, a chance for a sort of informal chat introduction, uh, you know, ask any questions either directly verbally or into the chat about the whole topic of you know, what does quantum computing mean? Um, that it's uh, in, in, interesting from a quantum London point of view, we were working to try and get some, some physical events going. Um, those have failed to happen, nothing to do with COVID or venues or anything, but simply calendars and stuff, as many of you know, Emanuele has moved back to Italy, so we uh, he's fantastically available normally online, even though he is on holiday today, so he won't be joining us. But obviously he can't help us with setting things up in, in London. But hopefully once the kids have gone back to school and stuff, we'll be doing some in-person stuff for those of you in London. But um, we also uh, had a bit of a pause on the webinars and things, though, as I'll tell you shortly, we've got an exciting one in mid-September. So I um, haven't talked to a, a lot of you for a while and some of you not at all. So what we do normally in these sessions is we have a quick go round. Um, people are happy to switch on their cameras if they want to. Um, but in, in order, anyone who's able and happy to talk, just give a bit of an introduction to themselves, um, why they've joined today, um, you know, what are the themes on their mind when it comes to the impact of uh, quantum computing in, in business. And for those of you who One of okay so so technically this is all extraordinary technically it's moving forward in leaps and bounds um but ultimately for 99 percent of the world they don't care about the 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 what or the how they care about what they're going to do with uh, with their quantum computers and the aim of this group really is to push that discussion when we started a couple of years ago you know no one was talking about that frankly the only conversations were about the te technology we're now in a place where um that is absolutely um, being discussed by uh, an awful lot of people in conferences and books, etc. Um, uh, and instead of saying, oh, well, OK, our job is done because it's been discussed elsewhere, we've doubled down and said, well, given that those discussions are having elsewhere, it makes it all the, the more valuable to have a group like this where people who want to ask questions that have maybe they found they haven't been able to ask elsewhere are able to, to do so. So that's why we're here. As I say, we'll go round first um, and then uh, we'll probably take one or two of the, the topics that come up in the introduction and, and use that to sort of build into a bit of a deeper discussion in the second part of the hour. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, as you're going round, as I said, I'll try and sort out my logistics. So I'm not talking into a telephone whilst looking into a laptop. That feels a little bit old school. Um, so maybe we'll kick off with you first, Paul, given that you've, you've put your camera on. Um, let us know what you're up to. And obviously, it's, it's quite an interesting time in terms of, of your changes. So that'll be very interesting for the group. Yeah. Um, so great, great to be back again. Um, so just for everyone's background, I, I kind of came out of the cybersecurity world um, and uh, moved into quantum about five months ago. I, I joined a company uh, called Cold Quanta. Um, it's a US-based company based in Boulder, Colorado. It has an office in Oxford uh, in the UK. Uh, and I'm president of quantum computing here. So running our quantum computing business. And we're in the process of uh, finishing uh, and getting ready to launch our first quantum computer, which we'll be doing at the end of this year. Um, it's a, a cold atom-based device um, so uses uh, cesium atoms trapped with lasers uh, and it'll be a hundred qubit device uh, at launch um, so that's my my quick background and good to meet you all and paul whilst we said we don't go too deep into technology when we have gone the the, the with round it would be good for you to maybe explain in layman's language what's mm -hmm. fundamentally different about that technology compared to a lot of what people have been talking about for the last few years. So we'll, we'll come back to you on that in a minute. Sure. Um, Rupesh, can I move to you next? Yeah, hi there. Hi, everyone. So um, 
My name is Rupesh Srivastava. I currently work for the UK Quantum Computing Simulation Hub, where my role is to develop and nurture the quantum computing ecosystem. I'm actually in a transition moment because I'll be leaving the hub shortly. Um, and while I'm looking for my next adventure, Thank I've you. taken on the presidency of One Quantum Argentina. And that's to, that's to try and help bring Argentina and Latin America back uh, well into the quantum era. So uh, quite an ambitious challenge. Rupert, thanks for that. Was there any particular link that, um, that, that took you to Argentina or they were just asked for someone and you happened to be available? <laughs> my, my wife is from Mendoza in Argentina. So we came earlier in the year because of family reasons to, to help look after a, a sick parent. And, uh, and while I was here, I was nosing around as I normally do. So, uh, and I could see, I, um, for me, the, the, the big challenge is we talk about the digital divide. We talk about opportunity uh, or lack of opportunities of resources and, and skills and, and Argentina's behind the track. So I wanted to, to give back. Perfect, that makes sense. Um, Fernando Hernandez. Hi, everyone. I'm from Uruguay, uh, Montevideo, Uruguay. I, I'm, I'm a researcher focused mainly on quantum optimization and quantum communications. Um, I'm from, uni uh, from Universidad de Montevideo, which is here south in Uruguay, next to uh, Argentina and Brazil. Um, and I'm part of uh, Quantum South, which is one of, of the biggest quantum startups of uh, uh, Latin America and the region. Uh, we recently ended up finally of an Airbus uh, quantum challenge uh, regarding cargo load optimization and other problems resolutions using hybrid versional algorithms. And I, apart from that, I have been attending with interest uh, your events and I am very happy for this community. Fantastic, thank you, Hernando. Do you maybe want to share briefly a little bit about the Airbus challenge to people? Well, yeah, uh, it, uh, it was a challenge from the, the uh, 2019 uh, and it, it was uh, focused on uh, uh, several problems uh, like cargo load and, and uh, other uh, optimization problems, uh, which uh, uh, the, the intention of the challenge is to propose um, new, uh, new innovative quantum solutions. And uh, I think it's, it's been repeated regularly, uh, perhaps not this year or the previous one, but in the following years, it will happen again. And well, we propose a BQE with Qiskit um, solution to the cargo load optimization problem. Perfect, good, thank you. Well, well done for, for getting involved in that. And yeah, it would be interesting. Does anyone know whether there is a, a live challenge happening this year as well in the way the 2021 happened? No, okay, there well, is, we'll keep it. There oh, is, sorry. There is, a BM, there is a BMW challenge. BMW, okay, uh, okay. So we're moving yeah. from, from, from planes to cars, I like it. <laughs> Um, perfect. If you happen to have any any details on that, Rupesh, and are able to stick them in the chat, that would be would be interesting. No worries if yeah, not. No okay. um, Jim Walker. Hey, how are you? We're good, thanks. How about yourself? What's what's new in your space? Oh, not too much. Just um, just the quantum engineering um, with uh, HQS right now in the process of merging with uh, CQC. So it's um, fun times and um, lots of good um, quantum, quantum time on our machines. And, um, you know, we're just uh, running pretty smooth right now. So. Fantastic. Well, congratulations again, as we, we sort of shared last time on the, on the merger. I think there's a, a real powerhouse going to come out of that. That's very exciting. Yeah, it's very fun and exciting. It's um, it's a great group. Um, both groups are pretty amazing. So it's um, it's going to be um, quite a quite a merger. 
Brilliant. And um, one, one question that I'm sure you've been asked a dozen times now, does, does that take you sort of away from, or does that take the group away from where CQC was totally hardware agnostic into a world where they're, you know, more just going to focus on Honeywell technology or is the aim to, to both be doing a, a, a hardware stack, but also be agnostic across the software layer? Um. They've, they've announced it, uh, basically, uh, the strategy is, remains effectively the same for, for CQC. So they're going to be agnostic um, uh, as much or more so. Um, they're, of course, you know, they'll, they'll, of course, take advantage of their, you know, intimate knowledge of our systems as well. Um, and, and that will just continue to, to advance. But the... Um, that you know they're they're going to support all platforms just like they have been. They're, they won't they won't miss a beat basically. Sense makes sense. Brilliant. Okay. Well, we look forward to seeing how that develops. Um, Manan, hi. Do you want to go next? So, hello everyone. So this is Manan tuning in from India. Currently, I'm working at Dell. So. We are also looking at the quantum space and see what we can do, what we can come up with. Apart from that, even I'm just uh, six months into my quantum journey and I've attended these sessions for the past uh, two months, I guess now. And I really enjoy all of the sessions that we have, the talks that goes on over here. It's very interactive and I'm looking forward to the next sessions and meeting new people over here. Fantastic. Good yeah. to hear. Thank you. Um, Anuj. Yeah, hi, all. Uh, this is Anuj. It has been quite a while. I think a long gap, as it was already mentioned. So after a long time, getting a chance to actually interact. So since last one and a half month, uh, being actually occupied with a uh, lot of activities focused on, uh, like it was a, um, like IBM Quizquit activities which involved the global server school on QML and then followed by uh, internship, which was again focused on finance and uh, it was around the portfolio optimization. And uh, like uh, last weekend, I uh, fortunately also get to the Quizquit Advocate. So I joined that particular community. And uh, like as part of that community, we would be evangelizing uh, quantum computing uh, within the, uh, mainly in India and the APAC region. So that's it from this side. That's it, welcome, thank you. Um, Jamil Islam. Hi, uh, I'm Jamil Islam. Uh, I think uh, I am the youngest one here. I'm from high school. Um, I joined uh, Quantum London uh, in the Medium channel. I, I just write their articles. I mean, I like quantum physics like uh, I, I just um, gathered the analogies with quantum physics, how it works with the Marvel universe and, and, just, and just write those on my articles. Plus, um, I, I would like to share one thing. Um, uh, I'm from Bangladesh and uh, there's, there's just one volunteer work going on IBM. Uh, it's called IBM localization. And we're just translating like uh, the Kiski documentation in every language possible. So uh, in my knowledge, we have, we have like uh, eight languages now. And I am happy to say that we have uh, uh, with the uh, West Bengal team, uh, with, with the help of my seniors, uh, uh, we completed the machine learning term, the machine learning uh, translation in Bengali so that uh, from the next year, uh, any, any high school student can, can learn machine learning uh, in Bengali. And uh, like, uh, so there will be like no language barriers. Uh, I think it's a good start. That's a, that's a fantastic start. That's great to hear. Maybe if you, um, I don't know if that information is already available online and you can put a link in. Obviously, most of our audience can't speak Bengali, but I think the the idea of being able to sort of share with the world that you're doing that is, is a fantastic step. So congratulations on that. Um, and also, yes, if you want to share any of your, your Medium article links onto the, uh, the chat, that would be great as well. Uh, actually, there are uh, four languages in the from the Southeast Asia. So it is actually Hindi is actually also there, and there is Malayalam. <laughs> yeah, Malayalam is there, Bengali is there, and there is one more which might be coming up. So it, it was a very good, I think, initiative which I think uh, 
was visible uh, during this particular quantum global summer school. And Brilliant. Yeah. Um, fantastic. Um, so yeah, Manan says, go on, people, be brave, turn your cameras on. I know that you know some people are still in their pajamas or they've got children running around in the background, so no worries if you can't. But anyone who is happy and able to, please, please do so. Um, uh, so there, exactly we, <laughs> yes, well, it, no, no, I think you could agree. So, um, so Ben Lee, do you want to go next? Hi, yeah, um, I just finished my A-levels actually, but I started learning about quantum computing um, probably about a month ago. So read through um, Rifle and Polak's gentle introduction, trying to gain a little bit more knowledge after kind of hearing things on the news. And uh, yeah, I saw this this event online and trying to get a bit more knowledge in the in the area. Fantastic. So what, what A-levels do you study, Ben? Presumably sort of a physics and math type thing, or are you a French major? No. Um, well, I did do French, actually. <laughs> but I did uh, French computer science, biology, and chemistry. So I've come at it from a, a computer science. I'm actually working as a Python developer at the moment. So um, the other part of me learning this was uh, looking at the CERC platform um, and trying to get into that area of it as well. Fantastic, good, well, welcome. Um, it's, it's uh, as, as has been said on several of our sort of earlier episodes and things in the past that, you know, if, if people are getting into this young, so, you know, we've got you just wrapping up high mm. school, we've got, um, uh, and another high schooler in, in Jamil and stuff. Um, you know, it's this. This will be normal to you guys in twenty years. So the, the sooner you start, the better. So that's great. And in fact, Rupesh did a, a talk with one of his um, his colleagues on uh, what did you call it, Rupesh? It was the quantum workforce, I think. So it's a very very pertinent topic. Um, good. Who've we got? Um, Shaida Nazari. Do you want to go next? Okay. Uh, I'm Shada. Uh, uh, right now I'm in Madrid, Spain. Uh, I recently finished my master in computer science and computing technology. Uh, my final project was um, something related to quantum computing. Uh, it was about a mathematic model of quantum computing. Uh, and uh, a little bit uh, playing with some states that are generated uh, from Fibonacci series. Uh, it's I'm really theory based. I'm not really. Uh, uh, I'm not. I don't. I want to improve my knowledge uh, in the programming area, and uh, I would love to enlarge the circle of. The people that I know in the area in order to maybe do a PhD in the future and, uh, and then maybe work and do research in this area. Fantastic. Well, you're definitely in the right place. I mean, we, we ran and it's sort of been on a, on a bit of a summer pause, but um, some, some great sessions run by, by Jude and Anoj and stuff on the, the coding side of things. Um, we had a speaker a few months back called Esferenza, who was talking about her journey. Um, she works for a, a bank in Spain, but has managed to combine her, her day job working with the bank with building up a, a real knowledge and passion about quantum computing. So you're in, you're in good company here. Hopefully we can inspire you on that route. Um, Mike H, you next. Yeah, hi. Uh... My name is Mike and I'm in uh, the financial industry in Manhattan and uh, I'm still, I guess, in the learning stage. I started last Christmas and uh, yeah, I'm interested in like option pricing and things like that. That's all. Yeah. Thank you. No, that's good. That makes sense. Obviously, I think we've said many times financial services is clearly an area that is, is going to to benefit in certain ways from quantum computing. So you're uh, a, a good topic to be interested in. Christina. Hi, 
Christina Vera, or maybe you can't come off mute. Oh, there we go. Hi. Yes, yeah, sorry. It's uh, sometimes I have audio problems. So um, I'm Christina, I'm joining today from France. Uh, I'm originally from Spain. It's the first time I'm joining the group. So I hope I'm not, uh, I do not have missed too much already. <laughs> um, I'm an industrial data scientist for Hitachi. And I actually work for the research department and my interest in joining this group is because quantum computing, it's a part of the research for the group and it's becoming a buzzword for all the research departments. So I really want to improve my knowledge there and see also like the opportunities that it could offer and applications to see how like, uh, the basically how the future is going to develop <laughs> based on quantum computing. And um, yeah, looking forward to- how, how many, how many, what's the size of the team there at Hitachi looks looking so, at how big it is? Uh, it's, it's not that big. It's uh, the quantum computing research group. It's, uh, I think they are like 15 or so. It's based in Cambridge right now. And uh, it's um, it's like I'm not in direct contact with them every day, so I'm not really sure. But from time to time, they do the uh, like the presentations, and I just find very like I find fascinating that <laughs> learning about it. And also, I think it's going to affect the entire like especially everything related with uh, data science and all that. It's going to change things. Maybe not like not in in the very near future, but uh, it's good to be aware for the uh, middle and long term. So. Absolutely perfect. Well, welcome and, and hopefully this is interesting and you stay part of our community. Thank you. <coughs> um, Amira. Yep, I'm just coming on video. Yeah, hi, hi there, hi. Um, so I've just completed a master's in information security and uh, from there I got my interest in quantum computing because I did a dissertation on the impact of quantum computing on cybersecurity. Um, I know it's quite a niche place at the moment. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm just want to further my interest on that and keep studying on that. Yeah. Welcome. And now you say it's a niche place, but, you know, I would challenge that in some ways and say that I, I think there's a lot of people who feel the first introduction to quantum computing for many executives is going to be when they're told about the risks of, of quantum computing information security. Now, you know, that's not a great thing. You don't want to introduce a new technology through fear, but it can be quite an effective mechanism. So maybe we'll take a few minutes when we finish going around just to, to get your thoughts, because certainly within the insurance industry where we underwrite a lot of cyber insurance, it's where I work, we're trying to balance the the desire to inform executives on this topic without freaking them out about something that may or may not be relevant in the near term. So let, let's come back to that in, in a few minutes. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you. Um, Marenza. Let's see if you can see me. Can you hear me? Can, you can we see can me. see you, we can hear you. That's perfect. Yeah. Hi there. So my first time, well done on the name, is Marenza, yes, uh, Altieri Douglas, so no meaning, can pronounce that properly, not even my husband after 20 years with me, so, you know, quite impressed. Uh, first time here, I um, live in Milton Kings, well, from my accent, come on, you can raise flags, where do I come from? Um, uh, interesting quantum computing, really, years ago, but I was quite intimidated by it. And then I grew um, some um, courage, or at least I'm pretending to, to, to be, and I wanted to approach it in a different way. A few friends of mine asked me to help them out with some uh, fundraising for an organization that is uh, uh, around quantum computing. Um, so I've been helping with the, the expansion, the growth, the fundraising, but I don't really understand what those guys are doing. <laughs> um, and so I said, okay, let me uh, um, contact you guys. So thank you for welcoming me. Um, I've been in technology 20 years, uh, still quantum computing seems very um, 
uh, fascinating, still very fascinating to me. And I wanted to refine my language to see if I can actually be in front of executives when I introduce what we're trying to do and have some sort of credibility. Now, how long is going to take? 47 years, you know, <laughs> but, I don't know, but I, um, I'm, I've also, um, I, I'm going to start at the end of September, the MIT program for quantum computing. So, you know, I'm investing also some, not, not, not only some time, but some money so that I can give to this new journey of mine some uh, legitimacy. And uh, uh, did I mention that I'm in Milton Kings? <laughs> anyway, thank you for thank you for having me. I think you, you need to explain to half the audience where Milton Keynes is now in the So um eh, where Milton Keynes is where is he? It's Midlands, where is he? West Mid where is he? I don't know, but it's um a 32 minutes north of London is um, in between London and Birmingham, north, south, and Oxford, Cambridge, mm -hmm. West East. So we are very central, it's a lovely place, and we are not far away Bletchley Park, which you should all know for being the home of code breakers and this gentleman behind me. And uh, yeah, uh, I actually had the, uh, the privilege to open an office, the headquarters of a, uh, of a company in um, a Europe, a US company, the headquarters was opened by me, very happy in, um, in the mansion in Bletchley Park. When you point behind you, Aaron, you're pointing at the picture of Napoleon, yeah? No, 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 it's the orange guy. It's Alan Turing. Uh, Napoleon <laughs> is uh, the, the, the guy I decided to spend my last uh, three lockdowns with. So I said, you know, if I have to be locked in my office, I'd rather do it with someone with loads of interesting stories rather than, you know what I mean? I, <laughs> I like it, I like it. <laughs> Perfect. Well, welcome, and hopefully we can we can help you on your journey. Um, Günther. Yeah, hey guys, um, good evening. Uh, I'm Günther, I'm based in Hamburg, and I'm very much interested in uh, quantum computing, and I want to learn about some new aspects in quantum computing. Um, we have a problem with deep learning, with imperfect information, and we use uh, the IBM quantum computing since half a year and we have very good results and so I want to learn what's new. Thank you. Thank you. Well, welcome. Um, Jude was having audio issues, so I'm going to jump over him. If, he's, if he can talk, he should let us know. Um, last couple of people then. I think Ryan, are you still there? Yeah. Hi, Ryan. Nope. We've lost Ryan. Um, uh, Elena. Hello, sorry, I joined late, later today. So I don't know what was your question. Uh, uh, your question is why have you joined today, Elena? Uh, so I have in the last, let's say two months, I have an interest in quantum computing and working with uh, one of my friends to launch Quantum, uh, quantum marketing, uh, sorry, quantum strategy institute. And I'm interested to have, I'm a data scientist and I'm interested to find out more about this kind of event. So somehow it's related to my field. Can you hear me? I'm not yes, sure. sorry, I, mute, I okay. muted myself. <laughs> yeah, okay. we did hear you. We heard you perfectly, Eleanor. Thank you. Okay. And welcome. Um, Thank you. Uh, Ryan, hi. Any? Um, are, are you able to hear us and to talk or not? No. Okay. No worries. Well, it's it's great to to have some some sort of old faces here. You know, some of you have been involved in these discussions for. Um, I guess pretty much two years now. Um, some, as, as, as you heard, this is the, the first meeting. We, we try and do these monthly and certainly you'll see a monthly cadence go back in now that the, the summer's over. Um, a, a couple of thoughts came to my mind of, of topics to cover now. One was that cybersecurity point. Um, another was um, we're keen to have uh, people doing any time of quantum related startup come and give a sort of little intro as to what they're up to. So, you know, it would be good to have thoughts from any of you either sort of speak up or stick in the chat 
the name of of any person or any company you think would you know appreciate coming and and talking about what they're doing at this group um and then i wanted to maybe sort of build off what paul said right at the beginning in terms of what he's um doing and then you know pulling in some of um what we heard from jim about the the uh, uh, the honeywell cqc interactions but just to sort of understand if our view has evolved at all over the past six or 12 months about whether the majority of business people can remain completely disinterested in the underlying technologies or whether we do actually think that it's becoming a sort of clearer that different types of problems are solved better by different types of technologies and and the reason I, I I'm keen to get your views on that is because we, there's a very easy message when those of us who are talking to executives want to say, do not worry about the underlying technology. The underlying technology is for the engineers and the physicists, um, uh, and you know it's, it's just not relevant. That's a nice, great, easy message. If it starts to not be true, then we need to wonder about how we give that message. And still, ultimately, I think we all want to tell that to executives because it is such a, a, a great message to convey. But we ourselves, I think, need to be clear and confident as to whether it's 100% true or only 80 or 90% true. So let's let's come to, to that in a minute. Maybe we start off with that cybersecurity point. Um, and I, I just wondered if sort of anyone wanted to, to, to jump in based on discussions they've had, um, you know, with anyone. Are, 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 are normal business individuals worried about quantum computing when it comes to so-called hacking the internet? Or is that just sort of a, a niche focus that some of us have? Go Rupesh. Um, some of the, some companies are, and it, and it was quite a surprise to me. Uh, some are worried, very... sorry, or, 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 or some are talking about it? Could it couldn't sleep at night. And that's because of media stories. So, uh, and one was a very large insurer who, um, um, and that's the first question they blurted out when we had a meeting with them. So it took, it took me by surprise because, you know, I was there to talk about the hub and quantum computing and, and what it could do for them. And, uh, and, then, and then the first question, and then the first response was, can they can it break encryption? And I said, yes, but not today, not for maybe 10 years. And then there was an audible sigh of relief. So I think we have to be very careful because people are reading and, and um, ingesting information from all variety of sources. And um, um, and we have to be very careful when we're in, when we're engaging so that we don't a overhype it, and B don't add to the to the fear as well. So we have to we have to keep it real. Good. Anyone want to, to add to Rupesh's comment? Paul, please. Yeah, I mean, I I I agree. I think that whole kind of breaking RSA is probably the least interesting part of the promise of of quantum. Um, and I say that just because. You know, there's a lot of companies doing really interesting work in the whole post-quantum uh, encryption algorithm space. And, and ultimately, by the time we have sufficiently large-scale, fault-tolerant quantum computers to break RSA in any kind of, any kind of volume, um, will we'll in all likelihood have moved on. Um, and, and yes, there's the whole kind of store today, decrypt tomorrow issue to deal with. But uh, I, I think actually the more interesting aspects, and I'd be very interested to hear what Amira worked on in her in her dissertation um, is around the whole um, quantum communication um, uh, and uh, quantum key distribution, quantum memory, quantum networking. Certainly, you know, my, my company does um, not just quantum computing, but we're kind of in the quantum ecosystem more generally. And as we're talking to the the large uh, telecommunications firms their interest is is really a, in a very significant way around quantum communication, quantum networking, quantum memory, and the implications there um, for cybersecurity are, are pretty significant. Much more so than worrying about breaking RSA or breaking blockchain. 
Okay, Amira, do you want to share some of what you, you learned in doing your research? Yes, yeah, definitely. I work both on the side of cryptography and what could happen in the future. And yes, it's not going to happen soon. And also, yeah, I did a lot on quantum um, key distribution, quantum communication, which eventually might become, in a way, a new quantum internet, um, but in the future. Um, and I think China is going quite far on it. Um, they've been working a lot on that in the last 10 years. So they are way ahead of the rest of the world. And also other things that I found interesting uh, during my dissertation was on blockchain and how that will be changing with um, changes in quantum computing and also in AI um, on the privacy side, how things will change. And I have two slides. If you want, I can share those two slides with you from my dissertation presentation. No, please, please do. And then because I know we have some healthy cynics on this call, we can get some thumbs up and thumbs down about um, uh, about buzzwords. <laughs> if you can get blockchain, quantum, and AI in one sentence, then you get a special prize. Oh, it's not in one sentence, three slides, but I can just quickly show you <laughs> if you want. <laughs> please, yes, please share. Um, do you have permission or not? Let me just let me check. Try and share. Um, no, uh, I don't have permission. Sorry, let me see. Okay, you should be able to now. Yep, let me. Yep, okay, yeah. I don't know if you can see. Um, if you can see my slides now? Uh, not yet. Okay. Um, right. uh, no? Looks like it's starting now. Yeah, now we can see the three blue slides, yeah. Yep, so yeah, um, so I concentrated on uh, mainly cryptography, quantum secure communication, and then blockchain. Um, so cryptography, Yes, it's like um, Shor's algorithm, which is fairly used in the world at the moment, and Rother's algorithm will either be weakened or not work. But on the positive side, um, we all, uh, NIS are working on new standards. So like Paul said, probably we'll be moving to other things by the time that quantum computing is ready with um, breaking Shor's algorithm, because we can't do that yet. We can know how to do it yet, but we can't do, actually do it on the grand scale. Um, and then on quantum secure communication, um, I, I'm not going to go deep into those slides because <laughs> that would take too much time. But yeah, um, China is working quite very well in there and um, we will have privacy as well as security side of things to look into. Um, also on defense and uh, political power ramification because what would that mean on who has the um access to these um technology yeah makes sense and the satellite side is interesting we had a speaker last summer who was building um uh satellite quantum networks to be honest i didn't understand half what he said but he's very compelling but um yes using satellites to distribute quantum keys and things yeah, um, yeah. they've been doing that yeah yeah, between China and Vienna, they've been doing experiment and yeah. And on blockchain, um, yeah, so those slides kind of uh, summarize it. Um, it's built on security and trust, and that's built on um, things like Shor's algorithm, um, RSA, which can be broken by Shor's algorithm. So this is something that would need a rehaul uh, for post quantum era. Perfect. Good. So that makes sense. So, so I mean, any, any any thoughts from from your side, Amir, in terms of how the message should be managed? I mean, I think what what Rupish says is is true. If you if you happen to get someone's uh, attention for for thirty seconds and they hear the wrong message, then that's not not helpful. Um, so you know, do we just need to keep quiet about the topic, given that it looks like it won't be an issue, or how should we manage it? No, I think uh, we, we have to manage it, uh, not, not keep quiet, but uh, to explain it, to, to give, um, to explain that it's not something that's going to happen in the next five, five years, for example, but to, to say that it is something that you need to look into, you need to start preparing. Um, yes, it's, it's not something that's going to happen soon, but we need to start looking into it and preparing. And if we need to move to new NIST standard, that's something we need to start looking like. 
what's your uh, basically what's the company's risk strategies for the next 10 years, for example, and to keep an eye on how quantum computing is evolving. Um, you have to have someone in your in your company um, keeping an eye on that. <laughs> yeah, I think that buzz phrase of quantum readiness is one we've used quite yeah. a bit. Yeah. Um, someone's got their hand up. Manan, please. Yeah, so I just have a question for everyone over here. Like, I don't know if you're talking about uh, all these encryptions being breaking down. So how many qubits will it take for that to happen? Like, what's the approximate number? Does anyone have that number? Like thousand qubits or a million qubits. So we're thinking about these algorithms breaking down all these uh, encryptions and all. But what in reality, how many qubits will it take? Because they say that just 270 qubits uh, can have as many computation states as there are atoms in the whole universe. So that is something that amazes me. So it's, it's just the power of 270 qubits. And uh, right now we have around uh, 80 qubits or 100 qubits maximum. So what's the number from where we can think, okay, this is where it breaks down. Yeah. I think Paul, yeah. I'll jump in. You've got to differentiate between physical qubits and logical qubits. So um, when you, when you the, depending upon whose papers you read, the number of logical qubits to break RSA encryption is in the kind of multi-hundred logical qubits. But then if you dial that up to physical qubits, you're talking many thousands, potentially uh, hundreds of thousands of, of, uh, of physical qubits, which is still some way off in, in the future, depending upon your modality and your error correction uh, methodology. But then you've also got to think about clock rate, right? So uh, how, how quickly can you run the circuits? How many, uh, how many keys can you break um, at, at what kind of rate? Which is why I say, you know, I don't think anyone's worried about, you know, RSA encryption being broken at scale at any time in the next, say, five to 10 years, but, but it will come ultimately. Um, but not something you have to worry about tomorrow. Okay. But anyone else jump in if, if you have a different opinion? No, I guess that pretty much answers the question. So we can have basically a rough idea of it's, it's not going to happen anytime uh, in the next, let's say, even if we have a thousand qubit quantum computer, still we are, we are good to go with our encryption algorithms. Yeah. I think the, 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 the topic worth touching on, but a little bit to what we said earlier, is we don't want to overly scare people, is this, is this concept of harvest today, decrypt tomorrow, which says that where you have data that has a 10 year plus shelf life, you know, if you can steal it today and just store it away, then, you know, in 10 years time, you can decrypt it. And, um, you know, the, the, the reason insurers care about that, for example, is are they suddenly on the hook for something that happened 10 years earlier? Um, so there are, you know, there is a meaningful amount of data that will have a long enough shelf life for that to be a risk. Um, and it's, it's a great thing to make a, a story or a newspaper headline about. Um, I don't think there's a, a sense that there is large quantity of, of, of theft being done at the moment simply for that, but almost by definition, it's impossible to measure because anyone who is taking that strategy is not revealing the fact they've stolen the data. They just want to sit on it for 10 plus years. Yeah. Good. We, we, we started kicking off in the summer and we'll see whether we can resurrect it to a sort of a sub forum specifically on this topic, both for you know, CISOs who are, are caring about it as part of their day job and for anyone who is sort of just interested because they find it a, a stimulating topic. So uh, if we manage to, to get that going, we'll, um, we'll obviously let everyone know. We, um, we have had a number of discussions with insurers, simply because myself and my, my co-founders here at Quantum London are all from the insurance industry. So we, we know sort of the CISOs and the cyber underwriters. And the, the reality uh, won't be a surprise to you is that if, if you're a, a chief information security officer at the moment or a cyber underwriter, topics such as ransomware are so much more important to you um, that you just, you know, e even if you understand conceptually that there's something to spend time on here, there's just no brain space left to, to worry about it. Yeah, um, I, I have something to add to that conversation. 
Please do, Jim. Yeah. So you you began this by talking about like business in general. So, but but kind of closing up or or adding to the the cryptography area. I would also say though that um, we're actually finding that you don't need that many qubits to to make um, some head rows into that space. Although I agree that um, we're it's not a threat certainly now, but there's actually a lot of science and and other things, and especially in terms of quantum inspired um, algorithms, because I'm seeing tremendous. Um, this, this, the concept of quantum has moved uh, the cryptography space forward in, in many significant ways already, and it will continue to actually. Just, just having that there, which wasn't there a few years ago, literally, um, has moved everything forward. Um, so there's advancements in technology that are just simply inspired by quantum that need to be recognized. And so I, I would say that every company, you know, you know, that has, you know, that's big, you know, of any reasonable size needs to, you know, add people to their payroll that are, are focused on quantum subjects because of this, the amount of movement in that space, it, it, it moved everything forward basically in ways that we didn't predict. And, and so I would say that the time is now to add people because it takes it takes years to get up to speed uh, to the point where you could actually inform and provide you know decision support to a, a CEO of a company. The, the CEOs generally won't have any knowledge in the space at all. <laughs> um, they didn't need it, and hopefully they will soon. And some do, of course, but most will not. So you, they have to rely on, on their staff to inform them properly in that space. But beyond that, another, you know, in terms of non-risk areas, in terms of business success and, and optimizations, we're again, making tremendous strides in that space um, already. So there's a lot going on in, in, in this space. Um, beyond threats and, and, and other things. And there's a lot of, you know, it's very important that people start now in terms of developing uh, familiarity at a minimum, but, but actual expertise in quantum to, you know, basically um, stay uh, current effectively, so. That, that makes sense. And um, Jim, as we sort of move on to the last topic for the last 10 minutes, maybe given that, that you've been speaking, we can continue with you just on this, this thought about the underlying technologies. Um, you know, what is, what is your view if, if one is finally managed to engage a, a senior manager, an executive at a logistics firm or at a bank on this topic, and they say, oh, but, you know, I hear there's lots of companies with fundamental different technologies all fighting it out. Surely we should wait until the, the, the hardware war has been won, so to speak. What would your response be to them? Oh, well, you know, um, <laughs> I, I think that you're missing out basically. And, and when it, um, it's, it's already available um, in terms of people are already uh, and companies are already uh, taking advantage of the technology, uh, at least from our perspective, uh, literally, you know, that I see stuff happening every day uh, in terms of the jobs that are run on our computers. So um, I know that that's advancing, uh, you know, their, you know, various companies and so on. So first it's already happening. Um, but second, like I, I mentioned already, it takes years to, develop, um, you know, uh, an ecosystem and a critical mass within a company to, um, to maintain uh, currency and, and quantum area. It's just, you, you got to invest in it. Um, it's a long-term investment because once it does get more uh, accessible and, and, and powerful, um, 
it's going to be it's going to be the main it's going to be one of the main approaches to um, the business you know the 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 more complex business algorithms. So um, you know you got to start sometime basically, and if you can afford it, you know many companies can afford it. Um, but if you can, it's a key technology area for like I mentioned a number a number of things. Just the quantum inspired areas alone are are valuable today basically. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. Do you want to jump in with your thought from from the financial services space? Uh, yes. Um, so the way I see it is that there's not going to be just a single hardware platform that wins at the end. It kind of reminds me of the Microsoft, uh, Unix, Linux, Mac combination that we have today. Uh, we're probably going to end up with a mix of those depending on what the problem you're trying to solve is. And uh, eventually, maybe in a few years, we're going to have software that is agnostic to the hardware um, behind it. It may be um, geared toward a certain technology like gated implementations or uh, annealing or whatever. But, uh, but in the end, you should be able to replace the hardware and the software will still function uh, the same way with no changes, hopefully. That's all. Good. Okay. Well, I, I, I like you saying that, Mike, because that allows us to, to move straight to sort of Paul with his view on that, especially because he was doing one of those sort of, I'm not sure if I quite agree faces when you were speaking. So go on, Paul. What's, what's the latest thinking on this one? No, I, I agree with the first part, maybe not so much in the second. I mean, look, I think, you know, if there's an exec saying, I, I'm not going to dip my toe in the quantum water, I'm going to wait for the hardware uh, to kind of work itself out, that, that would almost like being back in the 1960s or 70s and an exec saying, I'm going to wait for deck versus Vax to play out, right? I mean, we're at, we're at day one, maybe day zero of, of the quantum, uh, I think, industry. And, and it's, it's far from clear uh, which of the modalities will play out. And, and frankly, it may well be that there'll be multiple modalities and different modalities appropriate for different kinds of problems. And in much the same way, as you see uh, GPU and CPU uh, in, a, in a very kind of symbiotic relationship in AI workflows, you'll see the same thing with quantum. And it may be multiple kinds of QPUs that are partnered up with, with classical infrastructure for solving these kind of problems in the financial services industry. And I think, Mike, to your point, I, I think there is a, there's a burgeoning ecosystem of software companies that are trying to create this abstraction layer um, in, in the way that Cambridge is doing and, and, and many others. Um, there's an interesting one in Israel called Classic um, that are creating the abstraction layer because ultimately for two reasons. Number one, most companies are not going to be building uh, teams of quantum experts, um, but ultimately are going to still want to use quantum as part of the workflow. Uh, and secondly, because, you know, as you scale up beyond the kind of small numbers of qubits that we have today, in the same way that programmers don't write and gates and not gates and, and write at that kind of logic level, um, it's going to be impossible to write circuit-based um, uh, programs for computers that have hundreds, much less thousands uh, of qubits. And so I, I think the abstraction layer is going to happen there as a function of necessity. Um, and while it may be hardware agnostic, again, there may well be different types of hardware that are appropriate and may require a different approach for different kinds of problems. I mean, it's a very interesting time and there's a lot of experimentation happening, but I think it's far too early to kind of say precisely how this is going to shake out over the next kind of three to four years. Rupesh, thank you, Paul. Rupesh, please. Um, so, so agree with Paul. Um, what I worry about when we always have these conversations, are we all talking about the same thing? Because there's a lot of fragmentation in this space, even in the security space. And, um, and it can be confusing. So, um, as Paul said, when, we, when, you, when you get to writing these things, so there's an interesting company called Multiverse Computing that is focusing on FinTech. And, and they have this, uh, um, they're allowing through their system. So as traders, so if you know, if you know the finance industry, traders love their spreadsheets. 
they probably love their spreadsheets more than they love their partners. And, um, and this, uh, uh, this platform developed by Multiverse allows them to collect, uh, connect their Excel spreadsheet to do portfolio optimization and does all the complicated stuff hooked to a D-Wave. But the, but the point is no quantum engineer required, just business knowledge required. Now, I don't know how well it works, but this is, this is kind of the first foray uh, uh, into, this, um, into this area where, into the quantum workforce, where you don't need to know quantum. So we, we're starting to see it faster than I thought possible. So, so the second thing I want to say is, um, is, is scaling. Scaling is where it's at. Just because you know how to, how to set, and it's impressive, okay, how to set some qubits and, and apply some gates and do some circuits. Um, that knowledge is impressive. But in the future, what use is it? Because you won't, you won't need it you'd, as, a, as a quantum programmer. You can't do because you have to scale to hundreds and thousands of qubits. No, no, that makes sense. And as long as you're not dashing the dreams of people on this call who are excited to be getting in right at the, uh, 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 the sort of starting level. But um, given that I used to, to code in machine code back at university, I know that some of these things are, are useful to get you going. But as you say, you don't need to continue doing them for very long once the technology starts to do itself. Um, we, we aim to try and wrap up within the 60 minutes, which gives us just a moment or two. Has anyone got any... Uh, additional thoughts on the points made? If so, do you want to raise your hand quickly? Shada, yeah, go ahead. Uh, about the thing that uh, Rupesh said, that maybe in the future we don't need um, to know how to put the qubits and the gates and everything, but I think uh, we need to learn them in order to go in, in order to improve and get to that point that uh, we don't need them. Like uh, the languages that we have in classical computing, for example, in C++, uh, computer programmer needs to know how to manage the memory and everything. But in Python, there's no need to because it's more advanced and, uh, you know, it's, it's yeah, not right now that there's no need to uh, know about these things, but uh, we have to, I think, uh, take these steps to get to that point that uh, maybe one day there's no need to use these concepts. Yeah. I think that makes sense. Well, I think let's, let's wrap up there then. Um, thank you all for coming. Um, the, the next Stamtish will be in a, in a month or so. I don't have the, the, the date in front of me on the screen, but uh, they're all listed either in Meetup or LinkedIn, depending on which you tend to follow. We will have a talk on September the 15th, six o'clock UK time, with um, Sergio Gaggio, who some of you know from Barcelona, who um, is involved in the quantum scene there. And I think it's called Quantum World Association. Um, he's also known as the CTO Pirate. Some of you may follow him as that on LinkedIn. Um, he will be speaking to us along with uh, Esperanza, who many of you know. So there will be a, a good uh, sort of Spanish quantum theme to things uh, in a few weeks' time. That uh, will go up uh, on the Meetup and the LinkedIn sites shortly. Um, and then really the final point is just if any of you think someone would be an interesting speaker, either for you know, a, a full webinar or for a shared panel, or even just for a, a five or 10 minute discussion in one of these more informal sessions, please do let us know. I know that there's a lot of people out there with some very interesting thoughts who wouldn't feel that they would want to be sort of the, the main event at a, a one hour or even half an hour session, but would love to spend five minutes talking through what they're doing, in which case, um, please bring them along. And thank you, Paul, for your offer in the chat. We can certainly work out the, the, the best way to get insight from you and your team. So. Um, Thank you all, Merenzo. I'm glad you understood 2.5%. That's certainly more than some of us were understanding our first session. So good for you. Um, and uh, yes, we'll, we'll, we'll have to all meet up in Milton Keynes sometime, given how well you sell the, the dream of central England. 
So um, thank you, everyone. Thank you for your thought. Thank you for joining. Look forward to keeping in touch with you all over the weeks ahead. Good day. Thank Thanks you back. very much. Bye-bye. Nice to meet you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye. bye.